Okay, great. Thank you. All right, we'll kick off. So we'll spend a little bit more time, but we'll have it completely over and done with, including questions um, with it well within the hour. Okay, so to let you know who's on the call, um, you've got myself, Claire Scott. I'm a New Zealand trained primary school teacher. I taught in New Zealand for three years and then I moved over to the UK. Um, I lived um, in London for the two years. I had absolute blinkers on. I never even thought about living anywhere else in England. I didn't really even think of it as an option. Um, I've um, been to Bristol for a weekend and absolutely would um, 100% next time would be would be heading in that direction. So I'm really excited to be doing this with Dick here. Um, but yeah, lived, lived there for two years, traveled um, and did relief teaching, a mix of CRT and then into long-term work as well. Um, when I came back to New Zealand, I've been in a supporting role for other teachers traveling ever since. Um, and I'm based in Auckland, but a global team, you may have had some communications with them. We've got Liv, um, Tyler and Sid in our team. Um, and we've got Matilda also joining us soon and they're based across the Melbourne and Sydney offices. So we work together um, supporting you on your journey. Um, and I'll pass over to, to Keir to introduce himself. Mm -hmm. So morning slash evening, everyone. Uh, I'm to Keir. Um, I have been a part of the Bristol uh, recruitment consultant team for about a year and three months. Um, we cover the entire Southwest, so I can give you as much information as possible in terms of uh, where to live, where to focus on, and of what things are like uh, here in Bristol. Um, I've been in Bristol all my life, although you probably won't tell from my accent. Um, and uh, we sort of just moved within the area um, from sort of South Bristol to North. Uh, I was, before this, uh, a maths teacher for about six years, uh, secondary maths. Um, and uh, I was also an English maths tutor for children as young as four years old, all the way up to 16, and then a teaching assistant, um, which was my stepping stone into teaching. Um, so through teaching assistants, I was uh, then able to apply for my initial teacher training. Um, I've been involved in education for as long as I can remember. It's been throughout my whole life, um, a, a, a constant. So if, if I may move into this to, to, to carry that on, to try and train and uh, share CPD with um, uh, and sort of best practice with teachers all over the world. Thanks, Akia. And you'll find most of the consultants who work for us are educators themselves. So it really helps um, understanding um, the transitions and, and explaining local country um, curriculums and things like that. So tonight um, we're going to be just talking to you about working through an agency and who we are very briefly. And then we're going to um, delve into Southwest England and, and talk about that as, a, as an area um, that you could go and live in. Um, types of work and types of schools that we have on offer. Um, we'll also go through the visa um, and compliance requirements so that you know what's involved before moving over. Um, and then around more of the support side of things, um, the community and um, events and things that we have on offer um, for you um, before you go and after you get there. So a quick thing just to show us, show you where we're located. We are a truly global company. We have two offices in New Zealand. Um, they support educators coming into the country and I'm also supporting New Zealand educators leaving New Zealand as well. We have nine offices across Australia. We can support you with local work in Australia, both relief and permanent roles. And that's the same in New Zealand, I should have said. We do relief and permanent in New Zealand as well. Uh, we've got 14 offices across America as well if you are lucky enough to have access to be to have the right to work in the US then we have loads of work for you it's um it's a really really busy part of the company and then we've got four lovely offices across the UK so um we've we've got an office in London itself we've got one in Surrey we've got an office in Wales and we also have a teach in Wales webinar that you can either go back and listening to listen to a recording of or um, we'll, I think we've got another one coming up next month. Um, and then we've got an office in Bristol itself where Takira is sitting right now. So that's what we're focusing on. Um, we 
the whole we are all one team and so all of the officers work really closely together and it's all about supporting you on your journey so um you might be leaving Australia for the UK and then we can also support you coming home or you might want to come to New Zealand for an adventure or vice versa we have lots of New Zealand educators going to Australia and then going on to the UK so um we've got all that in country support and if you're on this side of the world you've got your consultant in Australia or New Zealand to speak with before you go at any stage during the day but we also connect you really early in your journey to the UK teams and um, so you've got that connection um, really early on as well. Um, to Kia. Thanks Claire. Um, now everything we do day in day out is all focused around you the, the educator um, and so we built our values, our purpose, and our promise all around uh, the the, uh, the provision of trying to make the education system as 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 good as can be. Um, our values are focused on on belief and equity and uh, growth, relationships, empowering the, uh, each other, having the right attitude, and then building teamwork um, uh, in both in the school and within our teams ourselves. Um, our purpose is to is to uh, offer exceptional experiences in, in education by, by any means necessary. For us, it would be to, to train you as much as we can in terms of uh, expectations of, of what things will be like when, when you get here, uh, sharing resources, including things that we found that work really, really well um, for, for the classes that we've delivered, things like riddles and quizzes and assessment for learning and uh, places where you can get really, really good resources for free, um, and just making sure that we that that we look after you as best as possible. So then you can then look after the classes of thirty kids at a time. Um, our promise is to to uh, place, I think it's a million educators uh, by twenty twenty five, um, positively affecting thirty million kids around the globe. Um, which is something that we take extremely seriously. Everything that I do, um, it, I, I always have in my mind whether or not I'm positively impacting a class of 30 kids or 150, 180, if you're talking about secondary school. So, um, yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot riding on it, but it's, it's the most important thing in the world for me, I think. Photo is from our last um, welcome event. So it's all of our um, international educators who have arrived um, for the last term. Um, and this is Sid here. He's our Sydney <laughs> consultant. If any of you have been talking to him, there he is and amongst all that. So I can actually see there's another one of our consultants there, Henry. Um, yeah, but that's our last um, cohort of educators. Um, so yeah. the update for September. Um, and onwards. Uh, we have a lot of work opportunities um, within our region, but also across uh, across the UK anyway. Um, within the Southwest, uh, schools are starting to look for their permanent placements for September, um, based on the notices that have been handed in recently. Um, so they've been reaching out to us where we're working hard to make sure that we have teachers in place for September, and also schools have now started to request for January as well. Um, so there's there's a lot going on, a lot of moving parts, as well as with casual relief, that's always in the background. So if you're looking to arrive um, at key points in the year, like September or January, um, then we'd be looking at uh, offering you a bit more consistency. That would be, that would be on offer. However, if you're not looking to arrive during those periods, uh, maybe within, like halfway through terms or um, essentially not September or January, then we can look at offering consistent supply work, which always tends to lead to long-term commitment as well, if that's what you're looking for. Um, it's completely flexible. So we do have our summer holidays approaching. It could be that you're, uh, you're looking to arrive soon and you want to travel a little bit. Um, that's something that you can do and you can just let us know exactly when you're looking to take a bit of work and then what we can do is secure you work around the, the, the travel that you're planning for the rest of the year um, and then we have educator events happening across the, the year so like the, the picture that you just seen was our with our summer event uh, but we also have some across the year as well things like 
um, training, like team teach training or behavior management training, uh, webinars across the year, um, sharing best practice, or just general socials, like uh, the Christmas social. I think there's one um, coming up as well. Now, uh, I teach me. in <laughs> West England. Um, there are a few reasons that um, a few of our uh, teachers from Australia and New Zealand have mentioned so far. Um, things are, although the teaching standards are pretty much exactly the same, um, and we can outline the teaching standards um, for, for, for the UK whenever you get in contact with us, um, it, it is, it, 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 there is a bit of a different feel, um, and therefore they've developed in terms of uh, the the, the teaching methods that they've had to adapt to suit the learning environment here within the UK. You will be stepping out of your comfort zone and uh, it, the, the idea of going to another country and teaching there scares me as well. Um, so we can give you as much guidance as possible and make sure that it isn't completely um, new to, to you and completely out of your, your, your comfort zone. We'll, we'll ease you into it. Um, you get to experience living in another country, which I think is a big bonus for me um, and it's not the typical UK experience especially in the in the, the southwest um, although I'd argue it probably is I think more along the lines of the typical UK experience you have a big mix of a lot of things like rural life um, living in the countryside as well as as well as big metropolitan areas like Bristol um, overseas and UK teaching experience is highly regarded across the globe the more experience you build in different countries and different uh, education systems, uh, the better equipped you are to then continue that journey to other countries, if you wish, or you can return to the Oz and New Zealand and continue the, the journey there. You also build up your uh, your network of, of teachers, head teachers and referees, um, and it's, just, it's fantastic professional development. You get to make friends all over the globe as well. Um, and a lot of our educators are, are, are networking with each other, going out for, 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 for meals and drinks and um, just uh, enjoying the, the, the experience of being here. They're definitely not left in the dark, which is really, really nice to see. Um, yeah, it's taken all the amazing sights. It's amazing. It's absolutely breathtaking, the, the sights you can see um, near Bristol and Somerset and sort of, sort of around Somerset. So, oh, um, is the sound playing from that? Okay. What's that, Takia? Was was sound playing from that? Uh, it was for me. Oh, can you not hear it? I don't think I can. No. Oh. <laughs> um, we have a testimonial from a couple of our <laughs> educators just to just to give you a bit of um uh, a bit of information about what it's like to be here. Okay, I might um. I might share the slides later. Yeah, if you can't hear it, then it's obviously not playing. I, I can, but I'm not sure how to change that. So we'll, we've got another one here anyway um, yeah. from Torin. But again, we, we can share these out um, after. But it's just nice knowing that other people have had a positive experience and done it themselves. Um, uh, yeah, so Torin found a job. Um, before she arrived. Oh, so sorry, she had day to day. She came from Australia, was she to here? Um, and yeah, started off doing some day to day and then ended up in a full time role over there. Um, is that over you to here? I haven't got who's who's doing who, sorry. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you just tell over me it's me. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Okay. Yeah. So um the process we we start talking to educators anywhere well from five years out if you're sort of wanting some general information um, but we start the ball rolling on the registration and getting things underway anywhere within a 12 month window of your arriving um, and the steps for that is initially having a chat with one of the global teams so if you're in New Zealand it would be speaking to me if you're in Australia you'll be speaking to um, Liv or Tyler or Sid or Matilda um, and we'll 
just find out more about you and sort of get you set up with the initial information and then we'll actually connect you with the relevant team so if you're looking at going to Bristol then you will hear from Tokia or, or um, Laura or someone else who's in the Bristol office and you'll start building a relationship with them and they'll start getting to know you if you are wanting to do CRT when you arrive great we'll get everything set up for that and whenever you want to start working you'll be able to start if you're wanting a long-term role then you'll be having quite a bit of communication with the team um, and they'll be starting to float schools and, and roles past you setting up interviews prepping you for interviews negotiating pay rates and things like that so you'll have quite a bit of contact um, compliance will also start around two months before you arrive and we'll just touch on that coming up what what the requirements are it's pretty straightforward um, um, registration you'll have an online meeting again with the Bristol office just to make sure that everything is in place so that there is no downtime once you arrive um, and the idea is that when you do then you ideally you'll pop in and actually meet face to face the Bristol team uh, and then then you're you're good to go in your teaching so that the the goal is everything's done before you actually arrive so there it's quite seamless Dates. So quite different from our side of the world, it is really good to just be aware of the term dates when you are planning your journey. It's, this is a really key thing right at the start, because if you're relying on earning lots of money when you land, it's not a good time to land in July, because it's a bit like landing in December in New, in New Zealand or Australia. So you'd, you'd be hitting right at the start of the summer holidays, schools are closed, you know, you won't be able to get any earning. So they're on a three term year and they are just about at the end of the academic year right now. So they've got one week or some schools will be finishing up this week, I suppose. Yeah. So they're just finishing up and then that's it. That's their six week summer hol holiday break. They'll start the new academic year in the first week of September and each term is about 13 weeks long but you get a break in the middle so you, they have a midterm break which is really good especially for traveling so you know every six weeks you can be planning your next trip you know you've got midterm break we're off to Portugal right we've got two weeks now we're going to head up around Ireland and Scotland um it's it's really really good for your travel so you you'll get sent all of this information here but you can just see all of the highlighted areas is is the term you know your holiday time so um best times to go if you want day-to-day -day work is any time from sort of three weeks into September so it will be picking up busy for day to day after that and then all the way through if you want to go on March the 10th that's great you go on March you know you go what day suits you when you're looking at doing day-to-day -day work but it will start to quieten down um, from this this sort of second half term onwards so from June onwards as a secondary educator you know they're on an exam based curriculum and it will it dies off so if you're a secondary educator you do need to be prepared to be doing some primary supply at that time um if you want a long-term job it's really good just to time your arrival for the start of one of these terms september is obviously the start of the year so super busy but january term is really busy as well there's always lots of movement then um, lots of educators coming back to australasia and um, so you can pick up a job really quite easily in january as well um, and then the april term there's still there's still roles that come through for april as well isn't there to care yep still busy yeah okay I'm just going to really skim over this quick because we want to sort of just focus on the Bristol stuff but we will support you around this we'll um the global team will talk you through this and we also have a visa support team um who can actually just pick it up and run with it and you can it's a 99 dollars and they do the whole lot for you so it's up to you um but you do you do need to be able to access a visa 
to be able to work over there. Some people are lucky enough to have a British passport. And if that's the case, great. Um, you don't have to do anything. You can just step into the country. Um, otherwise, this is the main route that a lot of our educators will go. For New Zealand educators, you're, you need to be under 35. For Australian educators, it's under 31 currently. That will change in January. So it will all be it will, will all be the same and it will be under 35 eligibility for that visa. Um, you can apply six months before it's all up. The cost is around $2,200. So it seems quite expensive. That's a, that gives you two years. You will then also have the option to apply for an additional year if you wish um, at, a, at a further cost. Um, but a big chunk of what you pay for that visa is the access to the free public healthcare system in the UK. So you will be treated more like a resident. And if you need to go to the doctor or you need to have surgery, you're fully covered by their public healthcare system. So you do pay for that in advance, um, but it's a bit like compulsory health insurance. Ancestry visas, if you're over 35 and you have a grant, it, it, there's no age restriction on this, but generally if you're under 35, most of our educators, even if eligible for Ancestry, are still going on youth mobility just around cost. Um, you can see it's uh, quite a bit more expensive because it's a five-year visa um, and you need to be have a grandparent who was born in the UK for that one. There are other work visa options, which we can talk to you individually about. The skilled worker visas are quite hard to get. You need to be a um, math, science, physics, Mandarin teacher, really, with experience. Um, and then there are some other sort of options we can look at. But that's something we can talk to you individually about. So we'll skim over that quite quickly and we'll get into the location stuff. Cool. So... Um... A few different options for locations that we um, service within our Bristol office team. Um, so you have the, the main city of Bristol. Um, it's a creative, it's a diverse and multicultural city. Um, and there's, there's a lot of heritage um, when, when, when you walk around, and uh, especially within the city centre as well, you can see quite a lot of um, uh, different sites to, to, to take in. Um, it's small enough that it's uh, quite quite friendly and you can get familiar quite quickly, um, but also uh, quite spread out if you wanted to, to take in different sites um, across the across city. It's, uh, I, I often liken it to London. It's just on a miniature version, really. Um, there are great transport links as well. Uh, it's quite easy to get around the city. All we would suggest is that you just avoid a few of the sort of outskirt areas. If you focus on a few of the key main roads, and these roads span from the centre all the way out to, to the outskirts. Um, so long as you focus on areas to live around those locations, then, then you'll be fine. Um, we've created a map and highlighted key areas on this map uh, for you to focus on when it comes to looking for flats and apartments. Uh, your typical rent cost, I'd say slightly higher than the, than, than the values there now because, of, um, because we're having a cost of living crisis, as, as we all are. Um, we're looking at around five to six hundred per month for, for a, a room in house share, or around I'd say seven fifty to eight fifty um, is typical. Probably nine hundred um, for for certain areas for a one bedroom flat. Um, your monthly pass for public transport tends to be around one hundred quid, although it depends on your method of transport. Um, we have these orange ostentatious electric scooters that you can use um, to, to move around the city as well. Um, so all you need is a driving license for that. And uh, it works out slightly cheaper than the bus. Um, domestic beer is around uh, four pounds for, for our feet bottle, thereabouts, a pint bottle. Um, and meal for two people at a mid-range restaurant is around 52.50. But we have a lot of, um, uh, I've, I've got a lot of recommendations to, to help you spend a lot less than that. So yeah, just ask us. We'll, we'll be happy to share all the local knowledge. Um, just beside Bristol, towards the east, you have Bath, really historic city. Um, it's quite 
um it they may not feel like there's much going on when you when you when you get to Bath. It's quite um, a laid back city. Uh, really, really pretty as well. Um, there are a lot of uh, impressive watering holes, pubs, uh, independent shops, quirky shops. But the thing that takes your breath away is just how it looks. Um, you have uh, things like spas and Roman baths and uh, this cathedral that you can go on a tour of and go all the way to. The, the, the top and see the panoramic views of the city um it's definitely a well-being destination i often go there just to just, just to have like a bit more of a leisurely lifestyle um it's situated about 15 minutes from bristol um quite quick uh to get there by train and then 90 minutes from london it's definitely more expensive in bath uh, is 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 the key thing so i wouldn't recommend living there um i'd recommend living in bristol and then commuting to bath if you if uh, you wanted to regularly um be there or work there um you're looking around 750 or maybe more than that for a room in bath wow. and about, yeah very expensive yeah, um but it. however when you get there you'll see why um mm. it, it it makes sense for it to be that expensive um one thing that I wanted to mention about uh, Bath uh, uh, it is home to um, one of our most notable universities for training teachers. Um, if you study for a PGC, which is the teaching qualification in Bath Spa University, um, then that would work in your favour when it when it comes to applying for jobs um, across the country. Uh, some of our best teachers come from Bath Spa University. Um, a monthly pass for public transport is around 192, um, including Bristol, so you can get a Bristol and Bath uh, travel pass. Domestic beer is slightly more expensive, four pound fifteen, and a meal for two again slightly more expensive. And I'd probably believe that value of sixty seven fifty. Same. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I love it though. I, I love Bath, um, yeah. especially especially because I live in Bristol. Um, you can you can take in the sites, re reap the benefits, and not actually live there is amazing. A um, couple more locations that that we have across Southwest. Um, so yes. we have. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, makes sense. Um, so we have uh, Exeter and our regional locations. Well, now when we say regional locations, I what I want to hit them with for, for for that is we service the whole region of Somerset. In particular, within Somerset, you have North Somerset, like Western Supermare, uh, which is where a lot of our schools um, tend to request, as well as Bridgewater and Taunton. Those are our major areas, um, both connected by one of our main motorways, the M5, and therefore all the way along the M5, the rest of our locations sort of fall quite close to that motorway. I'd recommend that if you're living in these locations, then you would want to look at driving. Everything is a lot more spread out. Um, you tend to have smaller cities and towns. And um, I think the next largest town after Bridgewater and Taunton would then be Exeter. Um, it's a small city, but it packs a bunch. It's quite vibrant, it's attractive, um, and it's in the heart of Devon. So you're surrounded by rolling hills and countryside, the Jurassic Coast. Um, so the key thing about working and living in Somerset and around Somerset is that it's cheaper considerably. Um, around 400 a month for a room in Exeter, around 650 for a one bed flat. And then your public transport costs tend to be around 45, 30, really, really cheap. Um, and your your pints tend to, tend to be rough, uh, roughly the same as well as your meals as well. Um, but yeah, the, the key thing is everything is a lot more spread out across Somerset. So again, if you're looking to uh, consider working in these areas, the schools are, are great, laid back. You tend to find a lot more Church of England schools and schools that move away from academies. Um, but in a substitute of that, everything is very, very spread apart. So look at driving um, and, and, and getting a car if you're looking at these areas. 
So a few top tricks uh, that I recommend. Um, look at uh, Bath Spa, or um, sorry, Bath and Ferme Spa. Um, Ferme Spa is uh, this, this tall rectangular building and it's got layers uh, like floors within it with different spa treatments. It's quite expensive, but it also has a rooftop pool that's heated. So if 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 you're going to visit spa, this is definitely a must uh, a must see. Um, I've only ever been there a couple of times, but it's absolutely breathtaking. Um, I'd also recommend like Fourth Kerno down in Cornwall. Um, I'm going to Cornwall uh, for the first time um, this summer, so it's definitely a trip that I would recommend. Um, you have Dirtle Dawn, the Jurassic Coast, and you have the Cotswolds, which I've just been to. Um, having come back from, from the from the Cotswolds, um, wholeheartedly recommend it. The Cotswolds is a large area and you have different towns within it. They're all extremely pretty and it just made me want to live the rural life as soon as I got back. Like live on a farm and raise livestock um, just based on how amazing it looked um, out there. So definitely recommend it. That's amazing. Yeah, I never made it to Cornwall. It is quite a height from London, but not so bad from, yeah, your locations. Is it? Um, okay, just quickly to cover, we, we basically, we if you're an educator, we can support you, um, whether you're early years, primary, secondary, or we have a whole range of other roles that are um, around um, special education needs, um, support workers, um, in the UK, every primary class has a classroom assistant, uh, so they're, they're always short of um, teacher aides and support workers as well. So if you're traveling with someone who might take a couple of months to find some work, um, then we can keep them busy um, in, in, in a classroom support role. Um, so yeah, and changes, there's not really much differences over there. We are quite aligned with our curriculums, so it's a quite a nice, easy um, adjustment, transition. The types of schools we work with is all, all the schools that you can imagine. So um, the same as in Australia and New Zealand, um, we work with state schools, private independent schools, faith-based schools, um, and we also work with a range of special education needs schools as well. So um, if you want us to focus on a certain type of environment, then we can do that for you. Is this still me, Takia? Yeah. Um, so we've touched on this before, um, but your options for work are either uh, just getting over there and just doing some relieving. So CRT or supply teaching, as the UK call it. We have a purpose-built app for this, and you can just book yourself out with your availability. Um, we do have uh, some educators who may have been in a permanent job. It's quite nerve-wracking, resigning, packing up your life, and then thinking, oh my God, you know, where am I going to get enough work? I haven't got anything um, really committed. Um, we have an ambassador scheme that you can sign up for, and that's a guarantee of five days a week relieving CRT supply work if you want. We could also make that guarantee four days or three days, depending on what your preferences are. Um, but supply work is great. You get to have a really good look around the area, and you get to um I found it really good for my own teaching I found it really good PD um I'd taught for three years but I didn't have very good behavior management and it really honed that um, but I became really confident and it's amazing when it gets to quarter past three and the bell goes and you've got absolutely nothing that you have to do so you're free as a bird and it's such a good feeling um, and you can yeah spend the afternoon as you wish and your head is clear and there's nothing weighing on your shoulders you know I should be doing my planning or oh god I've got some marking to do it's really freeing um on the on the con side it's 
quite isolating. So people don't really, you don't have many adult conversations during your day. Um, everyone is really busy. They have got marking and assessments and loads of things to do. They don't have time to really chat to supply teachers coming through. So you will find that um, it's good to make the most of our networks or if you've got friends there, um, you know, that's... Um, just something to consider. Long-term contracts is obviously you do get those relationships with the kids and you have colleagues. So it is really nice for settling in. You feel immediately part of a community. Um, you do have the same kind of workload that you have on this side of the world, though the expectations will be very similar to what you're used to here. Um, pay rates are higher so when it comes to day-to-day -day relieving it's a set rate generally there's a little bit of variation but um, they just want to teach for the day they might get a new grad or they might get an experienced teacher with 20 years um, they just want someone to cover the class so for that the schools sort of pay a set rate long-term contract you um, your experience is recognized and you'll find that you're earning you know up to what 30 pounds more a day potentially to care um it cases. depends on your teaching scale yeah. um it starts if from around sort of... 10, 10 pound extra per day but then it can go up to an extra uh 110 per day Right, yeah. So if you're at the top of the scale, you can be earning a lot more um, in long-term work. So it's just something to be aware of. Um, you, you can chop and change, obviously. So some people go over, have a look around with supply and then move into long-term. Um, and you can do it the other way around. We do also find um, permanent roles. And that's particularly in more of the regional areas um, in Southwest as well as um, England as well. So that's when you're employed directly with the school. Uh, cool, this is me. So um, we have a couple of relocation bonuses, uh, depending on the level of commitment that you choose before you come over to the UK. Um, so let's say within our conversations that we've had in the run up to you arriving, um, let's say you're coming over in September. Uh, before September, we've been able to offer you um, our ambassador contract, which is our guaranteed worker scheme. Um, within uh, this contract, so long as you stay a set number of days, Let's say you want to uh, guarantee two days of work a week. Uh, we can we can say yeah, we can guarantee you either um, work across the region for those two days, or if we fail to do that, then we pay you anyway. Um, so you can you can stay at home and enjoy the day off, and also enjoy the the, the salary as well. Um, if you sign on to that. So long as you don't work for, for anyone else and so long as you agree to, to uh, a reasonable commuting distance as well, um, if you sign that before you arrive, we'll then uh, give you a relocation bonus of £250. Um, all you would need to do is also supply us with the uh, flight tickets. It's, it's sort of like a flight reimbursement. Um, now, if you were to sign up to a contract role, so let's say come September uh, before it, so around about now, we talk to you about a permanent role. Uh, let's say so-and-so is looking for an English teacher and you agree to be signed up to it and uh, agree to uh, sort of confirm yourself within that role. Uh, and it's mm, longer than the term, which it often is. Then on successful, the successful completion of your first term, you then get a relocation bonus of 500 pounds. Um, and then there's also a $50 reimbursement for um, the visa support app and fee as well. So yeah, um, so long as uh, so long as we uh, we have that communication and you have um, that sort of level of commitment secured before you arrive, we we will reward you based on that. Okay, now when it comes to finding some place to live. Um, there are a couple of things uh, that you can do. So most of our um, overseas educators, what they tend to do is for the first couple of weeks or so, secure like an Airbnb or um, like a like a hostel and give themselves that time of a couple of weeks to then physically view apartments around the city. Um, it's, it's best to view in person um, as as you know and then and then offer based on that. Um, if 
you choose not to do that, maybe you've got um, uh, an apartment secured already, I would often recommend looking at uh, websites like Right Move or Zoopla or other um, property websites or Facebook groups or um, you have our Brit Bound Educators uh, where um, our Facebook site where we normally have educators networking and, and talking about rooms that they have available coming up. Um, then yeah, you can you can secure it through those channels as well. Um, all I would suggest is do plenty of research before you arrive. Be, give as much information as you need when it comes to the area. Write a list of all of the things that's important to you in a house, and then just uh, filter your searches based on those. And then allow up to around six weeks to find accommodation um, when when you're on the ground in the UK. About six weeks after you arrive, if you're choosing to to book up a hostel or an Airbnb whilst, whilst you're here. Um, it takes a bit of flexibility. So uh, it, it, it might be a bit of a tumultuous time when you arrive if you haven't got a flat secured. Um, but again, we can offer you as much support as, as we need to. I've um, looked for properties and shared them with uh, educators who've had a bit of um, wiggle room around uh, like between arriving and actually starting work. So if you need us to, to point you in the right direction, we definitely can. So getting around. The main ways uh, that we've mentioned, public transport tends to be uh, great for your, your major cities and towns, Bristol, Taunton, Bridgewater, Bath, and Western Supermare. Um, for Bristol, it will be buses, uh, less less so trains um, and, and things like that. And then for around Somerset, um, it's sort of a mix of buses around the towns and then trains between them. Um, you can you can get to some of our schools by foot, depending on where you live. And we'd always recommend sort of uh, methods of journeying for, for each and every placement. Um, a bike is a great option if you want to stay active, save money, and uh, also support the environment as well. Uh, Bristol in particular that I know of has uh, dedicated cycle lanes uh, spanning from the top of the city all the way through to the bottom. Uh, so that's a good, uh, I tempted to say around 15, 20 miles from top to bottom. Um, and then you can also get a car. Less important if you're living in Bristol, although it does help. I drive around Bristol and I think it is the, the, the easiest way to, to, to travel around. Um, but it's not a necessity for, for Bristol, more so for Somerset. Mm -hmm. A few other things to set up. Um, so you can um, set up your bank accounts. There are a few that we recommend here. Um, the ones I've heard of the most are, are uh, accounts like Monzo uh, or HSBC because it's global as well, makes things a little bit easier. Um, but you need to have one set up so, so that you can set up the payroll correctly. Um, and it's it, it helps if you have a system in place where you can report money that you have from Oz over to the UK whenever you need to. So yeah, I think Monzo has been a firm favorite for, for our overseas. I think WISE is also hugely popular now as well. That's really taking off WISE. And you can actually get paid into that as a bank account. So it's um, people use it all the time. So it's like a card that you can load all different currencies on. But you can apply for it here before you go and get it and get it before you even leave. So that seems to be taking over Monzo too now. Mm. Cool. Um Final things to set up, uh, you would need um, a mobile phone, similar to bank accounts, there's lots of options when it comes to signing up mobile phones, different providers, SIM only plans, if you already have a handset, uh, they're usually around 10 to 25 pounds a month, although again, I can offer, I, I can I sort of guide you towards um, plans that are a little bit cheaper than that, like the one that I'm paying is eight pounds a month, um, and, it, and it suits me just fine. Uh, three mobile and gift card, two really good options to consider. Um, you can organize some of these SIM cards before you arrive, but honestly, it doesn't take too long. You can you can visit like a, a branch and, and 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 get it there and then. So it's it's quite a quick thing. Uh, one of the main things is um, national insurance. 
So the national insurance number is quite similar in terms of how it works to your tax file number. Um, it allows you to uh, be set up on payroll correctly and make sure you're paying the correct tax. If you don't get your national insurance number in time, um, then what would tend to happen is that you would be uh, paying a slightly too much tax, which would then be um, refunded to you at the end of a tax year. Um, you can file for it sooner as well, but you know, calling the uh, tax office HMRC is, is not always the easiest thing in the world. Um, so when you get here, when you pick up your uh, BRP, if you're if, if you're here on a on a visa basis, um, you can also retrieve your national insurance number. And if you don't at that point, then you can apply for it. Again, we can give you as much information as possible, including a, a, the, the link that you see at the bottom is what we tend to share. Um, again, without this, you will be overpaying when it comes to tax. So we'd want to avoid that and make sure you're set up uh, correctly as soon as possible. Over to you. Uh, so we mentioned this earlier, but it is a big um, part of who we are um, is trying to provide opportunities to connect our educators and um, make sure you um, enjoy the whole experience that you feel immediately connected to the country that you've gone to um, and that the support is there from us, but also hopefully from new friends that you meet. So um, before you leave, we, we do host in-country social events. If you're in Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane um, or Auckland, we generally will host pre-departure events to connect you before you go. So we do that generally by cohort um, and we've also got a really active Facebook group for Britbound educators. I'll follow up with an email after this and that will have a link to join that group. Um, and then once you arrive, as you would have seen, we do welcome events at the start of every term. We welcome each cohort with a big sort of scavenger hunt um, activity around London, um, all of our regional um, we do it on a Saturday, so if you are in Bristol, you can still get along to that and meet lots of people. Um, we have lots of sports teams that you can join as well. Um, so, yeah, there's a big focus around making sure that you um, are feeling part of everything. Oh, these are some of the sporting teams that we, um, and these are specifically the ones for Southwest. You've done, have you put these in to care? Yeah, so um, we have a few of our uh, um, sporting events that, 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 that we have across Southwest, uh, like Bristol Soccer World, um, the Downs League uh, is, is, is pretty popular when it comes to things like football. Um, we have an Aussie Rules team, and uh, to this day, I still don't fully understand how it works. Um, <laughs> I've, I've asked questions about it, but I haven't, I haven't really understood how Aussie Rules works. Um, and then uh, a member of our team actually in 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 Bristol is is a is a big netball player. So um, there's there's one that she's recommended um, for for the Southwest as well. So, yeah. And to paying sport yourself, you can still go along as a social supporter. They they uh, definitely welcome and enjoy that. So it's just a good way to meet people. Is that me here or you? Yeah, uh, it's me. Um, so we also have. Um, a sort of uh, the words have gone from my head, but it's 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 a scheme that we're running. Basically, um, we offer five percent <laughs> off any tour or any sort of travel uh, using the code ANZUK five um, when you travel globally with Contiki. Um, so we're working in partnership with them. Uh, all what, what you can also do along your travels is um, post um, a travel picture, uh, tag us. Uh, and use the hashtag, hashtag going away with Ains UK, and then you can enter yourself in the draw to, to win. Um, there's some, been some really good photos that have come through as well. Yeah, so you moving forward. Um, in the, in the, um, just to get us along so we finish in time, I'm going to really quickly go over this because we trigger what you need when you need it so we have this in hand and we make sure that everything is done at the right time but just to give you a heads up um there is no 
similar registration body like we have in Australia or New Zealand. Um, you don't actually have to go through registering with the VIT or the New Zealand Teaching Council. Um, we can teach over there for four years without having that. So um, if you're just going to do supply and you want to live in London, then you don't actually really need it. If you are fully registered in your own country, then you're automatically eligible for qualified teacher status. It is free um, and it does help having it, particularly if you are going out of London into the regions, we will tell you how to do this. It's just an online application. So um, yeah, much better than, uh, easier than what our other educators coming into Australia or New Zealand have to do. Um, you have to do an online module before you start working on um, the safeguarding training. It's like the Vulnerable Children's Act in New Zealand or, um, Oh, I always forget. Uh, yeah, so mandatory what, reporting. Mandatory reporting. Yeah. Is that what they call it in Australia? <laughs> you know what I mean, Australians? Um, <laughs> it's basically keeping the children safe. Yeah. Is that what they call it? Anyone on there on the chat so. to help me? <laughs> um, so you have to do a module. Um, it's very straightforward, just so that you're up to date with what their system is. Um, and qualifications, we just accept Oh, mandatory reporting. Yeah, that's the one. Thank you. That's that's one. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, equals is fine for qualifications, so that keeps it nice and easy. For referees, we need two referees to cover your last two years, and they need to be in leadership positions or if you're a new grad they need to be your mentor or uni lecturer and they must be work email addresses and police checks we will prompt you to do this um, we support you with your cv we've got templates we send out to you and we can take you through getting that um, set up so it's looking really good um, and the there is a compulsory UK police check that you must do. Everyone working in an English school has to have a disclosure and barring service check that's this year, the DBS. So that is a cost that you will incur. Um, and it's just a blanket requirement um, just to keep the kids safe over there. So we facilitate that before you arrive. And as we said, the whole idea is all of this is done before you actually land. Um, is that me? So flights, um, you can enter the country on a one-way ticket. That's absolutely fine as long as you hold a visa or a UK passport. So you can just look out for the best option that suits you coming into the country one way. Um, travel insurance, as we said, you are covered for health. Um, uh, so it's recommended you definitely get travel insurance to see you through until you land. Some people will get it for the first couple of weeks or week. Um, some people get travel insurance for the for the whole year initially when they're there. It depends how risk averse you are. I got it to cover myself there. I was covered for health while I was in the UK. And then I had a year's travel insurance, which only triggered every time I left England. So every time I did my short trips over to Europe, it was just automatically, that was a really kind of cost efficient way that worked quite well. But we've got more, lots more information on that in our info pack. So once you start the process with us, you'll, you'll get a really in-depth info pack on the UK, which will take you through everything you need to know, um, opening up bank accounts and things like that. We've got a really good blog, um, and I'm going to, on my follow-up email, we'll be directing you to a couple of um, really good links on there that will be useful to you. We have a learning management system, which is our online PD, um, and all the other things that we've mentioned. So I'm going to whip through to questions. You can either um, turn your camera on or chuck them in the chat, um, and um, we will do our best to answer them. Takia's needs to be off in five minutes anyway, but mm. if you you, um, don't have any questions um, I'll say thank you so much for joining us this evening and and that's fine to jump off but um, if, you, if you'd like to stick around and see if anyone else has any questions similar to you um, yeah feel free Just going to, while we're waiting for those, um, just sort of next steps will be, I will send out the email um, that will have a link to book a call with us. And it will be either um, with me or with whoever your local consultant is. Do we cover the Cornwall area to care? 
So, um, short answer, yes, we do. Uh, the long answer is only on a long-term and permanent basis. Um, so the majority of our focus and our business is on Somerset. Cornwall would be further down south. Uh, so we can reach out to particular schools who are looking, same as basically anywhere really in the UK, and uh, assist them with their long-term and permanent roles only, but not on a day-to-day -day and supply basis currently. Sorry. Um, can you, can you begin by doing, so uh, another question, can you begin by doing a one-term contract and then extend this if you'd like to? Um, so that is based on the relationship that you form with the school um, and whether or not uh, the, the, the sort of needs of the school as well. What we found for every single one of our overseas educators, so 100% of them for, uh, from September and from January, um, is that as soon as they've been in for a longer term contract, so for us, longer term means four weeks and above, um, as soon as they were in for a couple of days, the schools were like, we love them, we want to book them in right up until July. So um, yes, that can happen. However, it's not always a guarantee. It just depends on exactly what you're looking for and whether or not you're um, uh, whether or not you're happy to be booked in until such a date, July, uh, further in the year, and whether or not school needs um, you to fill that role for that period of time. Um, there is always recruitment running uh, on in the background, but for roles that are hard to fill. For us, it's been things like maths, science, and music have been notoriously hard to fill for, for this academic year. They've kept our overseas staff on for, for a lot longer. Um, so uh, hopefully that, that answers your question. Um, you can definitely extend so as so, so long as the uh, conditions are like to do Um Long term, uh, I did mention it before, long term is for us four weeks or more. Um, good to see that you, oh, that was in depth, good. Um, do you need additional studies in music to become a music teacher? Um, so to become a music teacher, you just need to have completed teacher training with the subject specialism of music. So either your major in music or your minor in, in music. Um, a few of our educators have completed things like a bachelor's of education or master's of education from from Oz and from New Zealand, which has allowed them to teach. Um, so so long as you specialize in the subject of music and you also achieve qualified teacher status, which is hugely important for us here in the UK to negotiate a higher wage for you. Um, so long as you have QTS and you're specialized in music, that's that's it. you you can teach music here in the UK. Is that primary Sarah? I'm just wondering whether you, you um, Sarah, are you meaning in primary or not as a specialised? Um, sure. If, if it's primary, I think you do, if your CV is strong in music yeah. and you're yeah. a primary no. teacher, then you could have a chance, yes, to teach yeah. music. As a as a specialist always, teacher, yeah, yeah, we we can always have that um have that discussion with schools to say we have someone who's a trained and qualified teacher, and their subject knowledge in music is strong, and therefore they can help you out as a music teacher. So right, and and they do are good with specialist teachers over there as well in primary. Um, the one where I taught long term, we had a music teacher, and oh, I loved her. She was so good because I'm terrible at it, so it was always great to you know take them to the music specialist. So uh, they they're nice roles to get. Yeah, um, um, I, I'll just talk to Taylor's one just on that graduate teacher. Um, at your teaching registration in Australia only helps you if you're fully registered. If you're provisionally registered, um, you, you don't need to because you, you can't gain qualified teacher status as a provisionally registered teacher. So I wouldn't bother if I was you, save you money until you get back, unless you're planning on doing some CRT before you go or something like that. 
we and do have an educator uh sorry Claire, we do have an educator yeah. in the situation right now where she's not fully registered um over, over and all she hasn't completed a provisional uh sorry i forgot the terminology um oh. yeah but she's we placed her into a long-term english role uh, so now there's this thing up in the air about how it's going to work or what she's going to get paid because she can't achieve qts yet so yeah um it's if you haven't completed your your provisional training um and then you come over here to teach you still can it's just when it comes to securing longer term roles and higher uh daily rates that's where things get a little bit more challenging because then we can't achieve qts and therefore we can't move you up the, the pay scale there is an unqualified scale and the highest level is the second level of the qualified scale so you, you can still earn a good amount of money it's just um it, it depends on things like the number of years that you've been teaching for Does having honours alter anything? Um, generally, as an overseas trained teacher, it's your experience that will step you up um, for levels rather than, um, you know, having higher qualifications from overseas. So it's, yeah, years experience that will help. Okay. Um, thank you so much, everyone. I, um, I will send that email out to you tomorrow. And um, any questions, you can just email me or um, just get on those links and book in a call with whoever your um, closest global consultant is. Um, thanks for sticking around and joining us on a, on a Wednesday evening. Um, all the best for the rest of your week. And yeah, hope to hear from you soon.